Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Earlier this week, as you doubtless saw, Kathy Griffin released a video of herself posing with a bloody mannequin head made up to look like President Trump. Well, as comedy, it failed completely. Nobody thought it was funny. As performance art, it was lame, least creative stunt of the week by far. As a political statement, it didn't even make any sense. But it did have the effect of briefly making Griffin famous again. And, of course, that was likely the whole point. Today, Griffin elbowed her way back into the news cycle, holding a press conference with celebrity misery chaser Lisa Bloom. Here's part of what she said. Image that I participated in, that apology absolutely stands. I feel horrible. I have performed in war zones. The idea that this, you know, uh, made people think of this tragedy, to have been touched by this tragedy, is, is horrifying and it's horrible. Uh, trust me, if I could redo the whole thing, I would have had a blow-up doll and no ketchup. I, I'm going to make fun of the president. And you know what? I'm going to make fun of him more now. More. I'm not afraid of Donald Trump. He's a bully. I've dealt with older white guys trying to keep me down my whole life, my whole career. I just wanted to say, you know, if you don't stand up, you get run over. And what's happening to me has never happened ever in the history of this great country, which is that a sitting president of the United States and his grown children and the first lady are personally, I feel, personally, trying to ruin my life forever. This is America, and you shouldn't have to die for it. The death threats that I'm getting are constant, and they are detailed, and they are serious, and they are specific. And today it's me, and tomorrow it could be you. I don't think I will have a career after this. I think he, I think he, I think he, I'm going to be honest, he broke me. He broke me. He broke me. And then I was like, no, this isn't right. It's just not right. There's a bunch of old white guys trying to silence me. And I'm just here to say that's wrong. It's just unbelievable. I mean, where to begin? Kathy Griffin isn't particularly talented or amusing, so in a way, she does have a point. It's a little disproportionate for all of us to heap so much attention on someone who probably shouldn't be famous in the first place. So why are we doing this segment? Well, because whether she realizes it or not, and I'd bet money she has no idea, Griffin is an important figure in American life in that she's the perfect embodiment of what the modern left believes. Consider carefully what she said today. Griffin publicly fantasizes violently about murdering the president, yet she holds a press conference to announce she's the one who's been wronged. Trump and his family bullied her, she says, so have unnamed older white guys who have, as a group have oppressed her despite giving her a series of very high-paying jobs. In other words, she's the real victim here. Of course she is. Liberals are always the victims. Being the victim is virtually what it means to be a member of progressive America. Victimhood has more benefits, it turns out, than AAA, and it's free. It means never having to say you're sorry. It also means being right even when you're wrong. Victimhood is the modern equivalent of holiness. It excuses anything. That's why liberals will say almost anything, no matter how ludicrous, to get it. Do you remember when President Obama, then the most powerful human being in history, used to imply that he was somehow the victim of racial bias? Did you catch Hillary Clinton the other day? A woman so rich and pampered she hasn't driven her own car in 30 years complained that sexism prevented her from becoming even richer and more pampered. Before you laugh, remember that overpaid sports figures make these kinds of claims all the time. So do entertainers and embarrassingly even TV anchors and now even third-rate unfunny comedians. We see a trend here because there is one. Wait, if the most powerful and richest people on the planet can be victims, who can't be a victim? Good question. The most remarkable thing about victimhood is that it allows the alleged victims to commit the very offenses they are complaining about. They'll punch you in the face and accuse you of assault, or more specifically, smash you in the head with a bike lock and then complain you're making them feel unsafe. They'll crush a Bible club at a school they've never even been to, then tell you that other people's beliefs oppress them. They'll take over a college campus, forcing spineless administrators to enact every one of their demands, and then claim to be powerless victims of a climate of racism. In the name of pluralism, they'll conduct nationwide witch hunts for Christian-owned small businesses, trying to shut them down if they don't violate their own faith. They'll throw illiterate refugees into catch-strapped public schools and call you a bigot for questioning it, all while they flee to $50,000 a year private schools for their own kids. And, of course, they'll fly private even as they berate you for destroying the world with your SUV. It used to be that the point of running a country was to make things better for the people who lived there. That has changed. Now the goal, and it's almost explicit, it was to achieve moral superiority over the population, often while making their lives worse. It's quite a trick, and victimhood makes it possible.